Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I will show you how to prevent your users from closing forms in your Microsoft Access database unless specific conditions are met. Today's question comes from Saul in Angel Fire, New Mexico, one of my Platinum members. Saul says, I have a questionnaire that I require my employees to fill out whenever they add a new customer to the database. I don't want them to be able to close the customer form unless they've filled out the questionnaire form. Is there any way to prevent this? So essentially what Saul has, and he showed me pictures of his database, he's got a customer form, okay? And he's got another questionnaire form. Let's just, let's just substitute with my contacts form. And, and the employee has to fill out some questionnaire questions about this employee before he's allowed to save this customer and move on. So Saul wants to prevent the user from closing this customer form if there are no questionnaire forms for this particular customer. So let's just use my customers in contact. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to allow the user to close the customer's form if they haven't put a contact in. Okay. Same, same thing. Doesn't matter what the tables are. Like I always say, access databases are like playing with Legos. You're just putting together the pieces in different ways. Okay. Now we've talked about a lot of different ways to force users to have to do stuff and to enter certain data in a lot of other videos. For example, you can use the required property in order to force the user to have to put in some value in a field. That you could find in table design, right? If you want to force them to have to put an email address in, there's the required property right there. Now, as I talk about at great length in a lot of my classes, including Access Beginner 1 and Beginner 4, I personally don't like the required property. I would rather have users leave a field blank than put some bad data in there. For example, email address. If they have to put an email address in and they don't have it, they'll put junk in there. 123 at gmail.com, for example. And what I always say is no data is better than bad data because at least if the email field is blank, you can generate a query and say, show me all the blank email addresses, and then you can go back to those customers and try and get their email addresses. Whereas if they're garbage, they're very hard to find. So I typically don't use the required property. We've also talked about validation rules. The validation rules also right here. You can use that for something like family size or credit limit. Let's say you want to make sure the credit limit can't be over $5,000. All right, that's a hard rule for your company. You can come down here to validation rule and you can say this has to be less than or equal to 5,000. And I've got other videos on that. You can also use table level validation rules. That's if you want to check against the entire record. All right, and I got a whole video on that one too where you can say, okay, this number can't be greater than that number, for example. Use a table level validation rule. Total tips are more than 20% of the total for the past week. Okay, so that's an even more complicated validation rule. But if you want to check against data in a different table altogether, you can't use any of those methods. You're going to actually have to use a little bit of VBA and something like a DLOOKUP to look up the value in a different table. So that's why I put on the prerequisites here, DLOOKUP and intro to VBA. Don't be scared of VBA. I got a 20 minute intro to VBA video for you. It's absolutely free. Go watch it. Even if you're not planning on becoming a programmer, you can really make your databases shine with just a little tiny bit of VBA, and I'll walk you through it. All right, so you should know required validation rules. Go watch this one too. This one's pretty cool. But you should definitely know intro to VBA and DLOOKUP. A little tiny bit. We need like two or three lines of code to do this. Okay? Okay, here we go. So go watch these videos, and then come back here. Okay, so I'm going to say I don't want the user to be able to shut this form if they haven't put a contact in. All right, so if I go to someone like, let's see, Jim Kirk, does he have any contacts? Yeah, he's got, he's got contacts. Let's see, who else? Who doesn't have a contact yet? Deanna Troy? Yep, she's got one. Come here. Someone's, I know someone doesn't have one. All right, Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc doesn't have a contact. So I would not want the user to be able to close this form if the, the customer right here doesn't have any contacts, okay? And I would assume you're controlling, like, from the customer list, for example, if you open up a customer from here, it only opens up to that customer and you can't move from record to record. All right. So you could, you could turn off the record selectors if you don't want the user to be able to, to scroll between records. Okay. So I'll assume you've got that in your database too. Now, the easiest things you could do is you could turn off the close button. All right. So go into properties for the form. All right. We're going to go into format 
and find close button and make that no. And while you're in here, I usually turn off the uh, the control box and the max min buttons too. All right, and this way, when you come in here now, save changes. All right, your user doesn't have any way to close this form, so you got to give him a button that he can use to close the form. All right, so back to design view. And in that button, that's where you'll put your code to check the condition you want to check. Okay, so let's go to form design. Let's grab a button, drop it right here. I'm going to cancel the wizard. And this will be my, let's call it save and close. I put save and close because a lot of newbie users don't realize that, you know, if they just close the form, access saves the data for them. They think they have to, like, have a separate save button. Like, they're used to Microsoft Word or something where you have to save your document. All right, so right-click. We'll go to build event. All right, we're in the editor. I'm going to close that. We're in the editor here. Oh, I didn't name my button, but that's okay. I know Alex is going to get mad at me, but uh, right here is where you put your close command, but you want to check your condition first. All right, we'll use our DLOOKUP function to check and see if the user has any contacts. Now, on the contact table, all right, we got a contact ID, a customer ID. This should represent the current customer. So we're going to look up any contact ID for this customer. Okay, how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our code. Let's dim ID as a long. ID equals D lookup. What are we looking up? We're going to look up the contact ID from the contact table where the customer ID equals the current customer ID. All right, so we're going to go out to the contact table. We're going to try and find any record where the customer ID equals the customer ID on the current form. All right, we're going to bring back the contact ID. Now, if this is null, it'll return an error message. So we're going to wrap that in NZ. I have another video on NZ. Go watch that too. Comma zero. I'll put a link down below for that. There. I should probably put these things on the prerequisite screen first, right? I always forget to. But NZ is null to zero. If it returns a null, it won't give you an error message. It'll just put a zero there. Okay. So we're going to say right here, if ID equals zero, then... Uh, it couldn't find a contact. So there are no contacts for this customer. So what are we going to do? We're going to message box, no contacts found for this customer. Please add one. Right? And then we're going to exit sub. We're not going to give them the opportunity to close the form. All right? Now, if it doesn't get to this point, that means it found an ID. And now it's okay to close the form. So do command dot close. What are we closing? AC form, comma, which form are we closing? Give it the name of the current object, me dot name. That's the name, come on, name of the current form. And I like to put AC save yes. Your end user, if they're using a ACCDE file, right, that you're going to compile and give to them, okay, they won't be able to make design changes. But I put AC save yes in there for me. When I'm designing it, because I've closed forms before and said AC save no, and then I, I'm like, oh man, I lost all my changes. All right, so that's the proper way to close a form. Okay, so now if I come back here, if I open up, let's save design changes. If I open up me, I can save and close me because it finds a contact for me, right? Deanna's got a contact, right? Okay, what about Jean Luc? Save and close. Oh, no contacts found for this customer. Please add one. So I can't close this at all. Until I put a contact in. Let's put a contact in. All right. Um, defeated the bold. All right. Now when I close this, I can now save and close John Luke. See that? All right. What, what is it doing? It's looking up to see if there are any contacts in the contact table for John Luke, which it finds one now. Right. Defeated the board right down there. For for customer four. Okay. Same changes. Yeah. And then. It says if ID is zero, I don't find any contacts with this customer. It says you can't do it. Yeah, I got a, I got a message box video too. I'll put that on the list. That's not a prerequisite, but message box just pops up that message for you. Okay. And then if it doesn't get to that point, it goes down here. Yeah, you could put an else there, but you don't need to. Okay. Now, this will prevent the user from closing the form with the mouse. All right. See, there's no close button here. Okay. Unfortunately, 
if they know their keyboard shortcuts, there is one more thing they could do. They could use Control F4 to close the form with a keyboard shortcut. Okay? And they can also close access altogether and get around this rule. So, how do you fix that? Well, it's a lot more complicated. It involves some event programming. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. If you want to learn more in the extended cut for members, I will show you how to prevent the user from closing a form using Control F4. I will also show you how to prevent the database from being shut down with the close button up here or by hitting Alt F4. We'll learn how to program the on unload event, which runs whenever a form is closed. I'll show you how to cancel that event. The user has to use your close button to close down a form or the database, and you can control what happens. You can do any other checks there. Check other fields, other records, whatever other permissions and properties you want to set, you can do in that button. That's all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all the extended cut videos, and gold members get access to download all of these databases. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.